that's the first foundation. The second uh, slide of our foundation before we get to the model um, is thinking about uh, factors of attraction. And so ultimately what draws two or more humans to each other. And, uh, you know, in these, you know, interpersonal relationships, uh, you know, I always say that these are relationships that, you know, we choose the people that we want to be close with, that we want to spend this time with, um, because some pairings, uh, we can't, we can't help, you know, like there's, um, uh, when you look at families, you know, some people believe, well, we're blood, so that automatically makes us, you know, we have to have this relationship. Well, that doesn't just happen. You know, sometimes there are toxic siblings or toxic parents or, you know, relatives who, you know, aren't close. Uh, you know, we can't pick our bosses, we can't pick our coworkers. So, you know, just because we're, you know, put together in a room or like in a life situation, that doesn't guarantee us a relationship. Um, but when humans are drawn together, there's usually one or more of these eight factors of attraction that are coming into play. Um, and just going through them, uh, we're talking about um, like physical attraction. And, you know, that is usually one that's actually pretty limited to early uh, stages of romantic relationships, you know, because as the relationship goes on, you know, and especially, you know, you're with somebody for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years at some point, like everything's going to sag. So it's all good. Um, but, you know, usually, you know, there's things that we, you know, um, people find different, you know, aspects attractive. So physical attraction can take a part. Um, commonalities. And this is, you know, we're always our perception of people. We're always always looking for things that we have in common. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I see somebody wearing, um, you know, a shirt uh, with one of my favorite bands. And so there's automatically that uh, kind of sense of comfort that we have that in common. You know, if you go on dating websites, you know, a lot of times they're, they're matching you by your interests. Uh, you know, the algorithms on our social media will pair us together. You know, it's like my, all of my feeds are writing and books and history and facts. So it's like, you know, uh, you know, the, the, where technology can help us uh, with that. Um, but, you know, what we have in common, uh, differences that complement each other. You know, this is an important one to know uh, that as long as it's not causing an issue, you know, the, they say that opposites attract in some way. You know, I don't want to be exactly like my husband or exactly like, you know, my closest friends. Um, like in my own marriage, uh, I uh, am all, you know, words and reading and writing. And uh, my husband, will read news articles and comic books. He's like, yeah, I, I haven't read a book since high school. Uh, he's very supportive. You know, he participates in, in my creativity in other ways um, by like going and doing research with me, but he's not going to sit down and read my 300 page book, but he's a, a wizard at math and he builds things and I'm lucky I can add. So <laughs> and we complement each other. Uh, number four is pretty self-explanatory. So reciprocal liking, you know, oh, that person likes me back, you know, otherwise you just have the one person pining, <laughs> you know, forever. Um, admiring someone's abilities. And I love learning like what my friends and, you know, and everybody's like into, you know, think about ways that you talk about your closest people. And a lot of times that will drift to, oh, you know, they're an amazing painter or, you know, oh, you know, um, you know, they, uh, like I had one friend who I admired, she was an event planner and just the uh, you know, the ability to organize and like put together weddings and fundraisers. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, this is, this is a skill. <laughs> so we admire someone's uh, abilities. Um, Self-disclosure. So the way, you know, what do we trust uh, and with whom? Like if something really, really difficult happened to you right now, who are the top three people you would try to call or text or reach out to? And so, you know, usually, um, you know, in our closest relationships, this is someone that we perceive to be safe with self-disclosure. Trust can build a relationship um, and feeling, you know, safe enough to do that. Number seven is proximity. So we do tend to form relationships with people that we interact with uh, on a more, you know, regular basis. Uh, that can be in person, that can be digital. You know, we tend to, you know, recognize like right here in the hedgy house, you know, who's in the prickles that fits, you know, um, 
uh, the ones that are good for our times and we get to, you know, know maybe some more than others. It's always a treat to like jump into Perkles and meet new people. But, you know, we tend to, uh, you know, talk more, form relationships with people that, you know, are there in our space and get to know us. And then finally, uh, what's known as rewards. So what we get out of a relationship, uh, a lot of times, you know, people think of relationships uh, as, you know, that scale, that like 50-50 it doesn't stay uh, there, you know, like if I'm going through something really difficult, you know, one of my friends will give their time and, you know, I'm not, I, I don't, you know, I can't give at that moment, you know, it'll, you know, and it'll go. But if you've ever had a relationship where you get to a point that you feel I'm making all the effort or it's way more stressful, you know, that, uh, you know, then, then, it, then you're getting like anything good out of it. Um, chances are, you know, the rewards are, askew. Uh, the formal term for that is called the social exchange theory, if you're interested in, in looking that up. But, you know, it, it helps us decide, you know, sometimes we end relationships because that's one of the things that, you know, we're just not getting anything out of it um, and for like a long term. So absorb, you know, the foundation. I know that, you know, that's a lot to take in uh, to begin, um, because what I specifically want to discuss is Knapp's relational model. And uh, so this is, uh, he puts them into the, there's 10 stages uh, that are in three broad categories. And, you know, he really calls attention to that each stage serves a purpose, uh, and each stage involves different type of communication. This is a visual of the stair steps. So this is one of those that I'm like, oh, I wish I could like put to the, um, the graphic, uh, but if you've got, you know, snap a picture of it, <laughs> but I'll, I'll make this available uh, to everybody after, after this presentation. So, you know, each of these uh, stair steps, um, there's a couple things I wanna say before I go through the description of each of them. Um, people uh, do spend a different amounts of time at each stage and it's not a perfect you know up and down you know if it does if the relationship does come to termination if you've had a best friend for 20 years chances are you're hanging you're gonna you're hanging out indefinitely up there at the top you know with bonding differentiating so you're kind of hanging out there um, you know, sometimes people move through these stages very quickly, sometimes very slowly. Uh, they can bounce uh, all over the place. You could be in a marriage and be at the top of, you know, the stair step, walk in on your partner with somebody else in bed, and you're down to terminating in two seconds flat. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes relationships come, start to descend into the coming apart phase, the people realize it, hey, you know, I, I've really missed you. Let's, let's rekindle this friendship. Let's talk about this family divide. And you bounce back up, you know, to the top of the stair steps. Um, and uh, interesting to note, and what I want to uh, make sure to explain is that uh, intensifying, which is the third step, that's the stage that a truly interpersonal relationship starts to form. And I'll explain, you know, how we go through the first two stages with basically everybody we meet, um, but intensifying stage three, that's when like a true, uh, a true relationship um, begins. And, you know, these can all be played out in millions of ways uh, as they are in real life. I have students who uh, write papers about their uh, a relationship of theirs that they take through these steps and it's it's all different. I mean, it's it's just incredible. So there's a lot that we can do with this. So uh, 